Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV on Playframe. The Warriors of Darkness are up to something, but frankly, right now, Alice is hurt, and that is more important. Wasting no time here. Alphano, pack your stuff. We're done out here. We go. Alphano would like nothing more than to get out of the snow. Good. That makes two of us. Forgive me. This is neither the time nor the place for idle introspection. The knights can apprise Lord Edmond of our success, and we the Lord Commander. More importantly, I should like to see if my sister's condition has improved. You may take a moment for yourself if you wish. I'll be at the congregation. Nonsense. I'm coming too. Like I said, no time to be wasting. We have got places to be and people to check on. Ah, there you are. Shall we make our report? Yes, let's. Emmerick, we're back. It brings me joy to see you safely return to us, Dermin. What news from Zelfatol? Then we are not too late. On behalf of Ishgard, I offer you my deepest thanks. As for we who remained behind, Mistress Yishtola has been tending to Mistress Alice in your absence, and I am pleased to report she has regained consciousness. I imagine you have many questions, especially given your recent encounter with the Warriors of Darkness. I know I do. Come, let me show you to her room. Do not worry, her condition is much improved. She is a resilient one, much like her brother. Alize, how are you feeling? Well enough, brother, thanks to the kindness of our hosts. When they told me you had departed for Zelfatol, I found that I could rest. The outcome seemed a mere formality, as did your safe return. Thank you, my friend. I take it your mission was a success. As if we needed any further confirmation that they are in league with the Asians, But to save another world? I think not. I too thought his story fanciful at first. But it is possible there may be a kernel of truth in all of this. At the very least, none of his claims contradict the word's account. You were following these people, Alizé. Why? During my travels, I had oft enjoyed tales of the Scions and their exploits. But after a time, I began to hear whispers of a gifted and theretofore unknown band of adventurers. Adventurers who had supposedly sworn to travel the realm slaying primals in the Scions' stead. The Warriors of Darkness. And in the course of investigating these rumours, you stumbled upon the Asians' involvement. Yes, exactly. Forgive me, but if these warriors of darkness mean to bring about another calamity, to what end do they hunt primals? To prompt an escalation. To deepen the beast tribe's feelings of helplessness and despair, and thereby drive them to summon ever more powerful gods. And lest we forget, these events do not occur in isolation. With their patron deities being slain left and right, the news of man's victory over Nidhogg must surely have sown panic in the minds of the Beastmen. Tis no wonder they wish to defend themselves. Power answered with greater power. Death with more death. A vicious cycle fueled by fear and hatred. I know it's like all too well. Indeed. The Asians sow discord and desperation and the Warriors of Darkness reap the harvest. And so it continues. Yet that is not the extent of their ambitions. The Asian himself observed that once the Powerless realize that the old gods have failed them, they will have little recourse but to look to a new one. We cannot let that happen. It should come as no surprise 
But Alizé and I have uncovered evidence that the Assians have been manipulating certain parties to ensure that a constant stream of crystals flows into the hands of the Beast tribes. If we sever these supply lines, we should at least be able to slow the escalation. Agreed. Kral and I shall journey to Zelfatol and learn what we can of the Ixar's source. Then I, for my part, pledge to lead a similar investigation into the origin of the Nath supply. Sir Emmerich? As a member of the Eorzean Alliance, Ishgard is on a bound to play an active role in maintaining the security of the realm. You might also say that I have some personal motivation, given the Asians' dealings with my father. However, I make no secret of the fact that my knowledge of primal beings is scant at best. As such, I should be most grateful if one of your order were to assist me. Allow me, Sir Emmerich. I have dealt with the Nath before. Let us consult with Orianja then. Given his dedication to the study of primal beings, I should be surprised if he could not tell us something of value. Allow me to accompany you, brother. And before you think to refuse, know that I am not the girl I once was. I shall not be a burden. You have my word. But Alizé, you... You are more than welcome. After all, it was you who set us upon this path. Wait a minute. I'm afraid I can't allow you to leave just yet. Not until you try on the new outfit I prepared for you. Oh, Tataru, you are the best. Isn't she the best? To think that the three of us plumbed the depths of the coils and confronted Bahamut himself. Had I not been there, I would struggle to believe it. Shortly after we parted ways, I had heard that she'd taken to the road on her own, apparently on a journey of self-discovery. Precisely where to, I never learned, though I suspect that was by design. So she enjoyed hearing tales of our exploits, did she? Hmm. My apologies for keeping you waiting. Hey, looking good. And may I just say, thank you for not dressing all twinsies again. This is going to make life much easier for us. Right then, shall we be off? Tataru never ceases to impress. Though for a moment I feared she might furnish you with an identical outfit. Praise the twelve she did not. Mother and father were rather too fond of making us wear matching clothes. Do you remember that time at the studium when that girl of yours crept up behind me in the hall and whispered... Sister, please, she was not my... <clears throat> Can we not have this conversation in front of the Warrior of Light? So be it. Another time, perhaps. To be honest, Derman, I wasn't planning on seeking you out just yet. When I set forth on my journey, I did so with grand ambitions. As you may recall, I promised I would not disappoint you. I pray you'll forgive me if I do. Hmm, which would she like best? A pleasure to have you with us. I've been meaning to ask about the carriage, or welcome to the fight. I've forgotten about the carriage. Hmm. Well, it is a pleasure to have you with us. It's been far too long a wait. New garments aside, I must say that you seem different, more resolute than when we last met. You have the look of a woman who's ready to fight for the future of Eorzea. To the extent of my abilities, perhaps, but I have no delusions of grandeur, nor will I pretend to have found myself or any such thing. I'm here today because I would regret it if I weren't. That's all. Fair enough. Let us depart for the Waking Sands, then, and see if Orianje can be of assistance.
Oh, I'm so glad she's here. Alice is one of my favorite characters in this darn game, and it is such a long wait until she becomes a regular part of it. But that time is now. She's here, and it's great. Okay, to Orionje then, let's go. And just like that, we have Prey returned once again. Still not the same without Tataru there, but at least Tataru's just joining us more places now. A fine trade-off. Orionje, apologies for calling upon you unannounced. Why, Master Alfino, would that the scholar had seen fit to grant me knowledge of thy coming. What bringeth thee and thine here this day? The warriors of darkness have returned. Pray, allow us to explain. I too have heard tales in recent days of primal beings rising up, only to be cast down by forces unknown. Alas, as thou didst observe, this serveth but to spur the beast tribes to pursue their goals with redoubled fervor. We have two objectives at this time, to identify and remove the source of the beast tribes' crystals, and to take direct action to prevent any further summoning rituals from reaching completion. The second is easier said than done, of course. While we were fortunate enough to learn of the Ixal's plans before they came to fruition, I should be surprised if the Warrior of Darkness and the Asians did not have similar designs elsewhere, of which we have no knowledge. Thou wert wise to come hither. For this very day did I receive tidings most troubling from across the Strait of Merlthor. Ogomoro stirreth, and there are whispers that the Lord of Crags neareth his return. Mere rumors mark thou, but in light of thine own discoveries. Thou canst ill afford to turn a deaf ear to their claims. Aye, we must ascertain the truth of the matter for ourselves. Let us consult with the Maelstrom forces stationed at Camp Overlook, Dermon. Thank you for your counsel, Orionje. Pray inform us should you learn aught else. I shall. If I may, brother, Orionje, is there anything else you would like to say? Alice? If not, then never mind. I only ask because you are normally rather more verbose. Nothing to add? Very well. Ere we depart, I wish to make a request. The Warriors of Darkness spoke of how the Ardor had the power to break down the barriers between planes, that our worlds might be rejoined. I would ask that you research this for us. Being nowhere near as well read as you, I'm sure I wouldn't know where to begin. That said, I have heard tell of a promising tome, the Gerun Oracles. Mayhap you could start there. By thy leave. Camp Overlook, was it? Very well. Hmm. She suspects him. And we did see her see him uh, in the Google Library perusing various books, one of which was the Garun Chronicles, or Garun Oracles, uh, in the company of Elidibus. So, I suppose she has good reason to suspect. Anyway, we've got a place where it's supposed to be. Lenosha, I'm pretty sure. Ah, yes, of course, outside Ogomoro. Come, let us speak with Commander Blu uh, Bluidin and see if there's any truth to these rumors concerning Titan's return. That had better be the sulfur. Hmm. Seven hells. At this rate, I'll have to appeal to Maelstrom Command for reinforcements. Hmm? Whatever it is, we don't want any. Uh, no, I was... questions. Oh, fancy that. Just when my kobold problems look like coming to a head, the scions of the seventh dawn turn up, itching to pitch in. Bloody brilliant timing is what it is. Right then, let's get to it. Let's do. I like your enthusiasm all of a sudden. It's inspiring. Commander Bluidin is eager to put you to work, and now I'm extra eager to do it. 
So our friendly neighbors in Ugamaro have got much more aggressive of late, just as you said. Matter of fact, our scouts spotted one sniffing about the stores just now, likely looking to make off with an armful of crystals. I'll be damned if I'm about to let that happen. Lend a hand and help us search the camp for the little bugger, would you? Absolutely. Come on, team, we're doing a little search, now. Our Maelstrom friend seems notably more agitated than when we first arrived. Do you happen to know why that might be? A kobold in the camp, you say? That would appear to corroborate Orianje's information, yes. But to be so reckless as to infiltrate a Maelstrom camp and draw attention to their efforts is passing strange. Well, there will be time to think on this later. For the present, we must do everything in our power to prevent Titan summoning, and that means finding and questioning this kobold. All right. Begin the search, team. I'm pretty good at hide-and-seek, but my chocobo is better, so I'm going to cheat again at hide-and-seek. Kobold. Hello, are you here? Kobold. Boy, they're good. Kobold. Kobold. Hello. Um. Hmm. Aha! A koboldling. So small. Hey! Um. Oh. Hey, hang on! I found you. Now you're caught. This is how hide and seek works. Can't just run again. Just stay back! Away! Far back! I'm not a. not a. Calf, it's no use. Pointless, hopeless, no use. Um, hey. I gotta say, it's actually weird talking to a character smaller than me. It happens so rarely that it's almost just a little unsettling being taller than something I'm talking to. It's weird. But, but please don't hurt me. I only wish to talk. Yes, yes, just talk. I... I... Ah. And there it goes again. Koboldling! Come on. Your legs have to be getting tired now. As do my chocobos. Could we just chat? There you are. Stop running. This was a stupid plan. Stupid, stupid, stupid. But... If I tell no one, then everyone will... Oh, he found me again. What to do, what to do, what to do? I, I come in peace only to talk. Speak, say, talk. So please, please do not hurt me. So this is our wily kobold infiltrator, is it? No wonder the soldiers were on edge. He could very well give one a bruised knee. Huzzah! We got him! Fine work, Scions. So, little one, thought you could sneak into my camp, did you? Plotting to steal my crystals, were you? No, 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 no! I came to talk, to ask for help. But when your soldiers saw me, they drew their weapons and shouted, and, and I... I... Now, now let's all take a deep breath and discuss this like civilized individuals. What is your name, child? Pikmin Gabu of the 620th Order. At least, I will be a Pikmin one day. Well met, Gabu. I'm Alphano, and this is my sister, Alice. Derman, the man who found you, is our friend. And now that you know our names, we can be friends too. Now, Commander Bluidin here thinks you wanted to take his crystals, Gabu. But you said you came to ask for help. Why to us, and not to your own people? What happened, Gabu? Can you tell us? I... um... uh... No one's going to hurt you, alright? Not while we are here. I promise. The... the... the, the patriarch, he's... 
The Patriarch's gonna summon the Great Father again, and you have to stop him. Beat him, fight him, stop him. Gobbloop's parents said that they didn't want it, along with many others, but the Patriarch wouldn't listen. He was so angry, raging, fuming, angry. He said that if they didn't have iron in their hearts, they would serve as coke for the furnace. And then the guard took my parents and the others away, and I haven't seen any of them since. Coke for the furnace. I did not want to believe it, but I have heard tales of foci fashioned from the bones of beastmen, which worshippers use in their rituals, hoping to summon more powerful incarnations of their gods. By the Twelve? That is... that is sickening. No one listens to Gabu. No matter how much he cries, pleads, begs, cries, they do not listen. Only talk about punishing the Overdwellers and praising the Great Father. Gabu loves the Great Father, but he loves his parents too. So please help Gabu stop the Patriarch and save his parents. Commander, advise Maelstrom Command that Titan summoning is imminent. Should the worst come to the worst, we will require their support. Time being of the essence, we three will attempt to infiltrate the Kobold Stronghold, secure their crystals, and free the prisoners. Well, if you're sure, you'll forgive me if I don't seem optimistic. We'll make ready, just in case. Hmm, this is dour. I tried talking to the others, but they wouldn't listen. So, even though I was afraid, I came here. Do you know that there are collectors who will pay a fortune for Beastmen ritual artifacts? It's perverse. Yeah, that kind of is. I have faith that we may yet stop the ritual. We would surely have detected the associated etheric disturbance had Titan manifested already. But I cannot speak for the prisoners. Twelve have mercy. That they would even contemplate sacrificing their own flesh and blood. Brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers. Time is of the essence. We must see what else Gabu knows and formulate a plan without further delay. Let's get to it, then. Tell me what you know, small one. I don't get to call many that. Sorry, I'm going to take advantage of the opportunity. But know that I respect you all the same. Shifting nervously from foot to foot, Gabu struggles to meet your gaze. I heard Great Father Titan loves crystals, cherishes, covets, loves them. And if we gather enough, he will return. That's why the Patriarch told everyone to go forth and gather them. So I was thinking, if we take all the crystals away, maybe the Great Father won't come? Very good, Gabu. I was just thinking the same thing. Do you know where these crystals are stored? I know, I know. Oh, 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 several spots, each defended by a different order. Gabu wanted to steal them, but he was too afraid to go alone. Yes, yes, too afraid to go alone. But together we can take them away and hide them. Come, come, Gabu will lead you to the first cache. Perfect. Come, Quay friend. Follow our tiny ally. Oh, it's just like right here. That was easier than I thought. Pray, see to the crystals. Alice and I will stand guard for any errant patrols. That hardly seemed fair. Then again, they only have themselves to blame. Quickly, quickly! Ah, yes. Working on it. Do you have them all? Good. Lead on, Gabu. This way, this way. We follow. Boy, what a place. Um. Ah, here we are. What are you waiting for? We stand lookout, you take the crystals. Right, right, sorry. A woman of action. Time is short. If you have the crystals, we should move on to the next cache. Did you hear me, brother? Brother! Uh, aye, aye, it, it's just that... I'm quite certain that crate once bore Ishgardian seals. Someone took great pains to remove all traces, but enough remains to make out the pattern. See for yourself. I struggle to imagine kobolds traveling to Kurthis to obtain crystals much less bothering to conceal their origins. I suspect these crystals were smuggled into Vilbrand by another party, 
most likely a pawn of the Asians, as Thancred speculated. I don't understand. Who are the Asians? Do they worship Great Father Titan too? Ah, uh, never you mind about that. As Alice said, we do not have a lot of time. Can you lead us to the next cache, Gabu? Yes, 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 of course. Gabu knows the way. This next one is the last, and it's very big. It's very big, very huge, very large. All right, then. Hopefully I have room in my tiny pockets. All right, then. Let's see how much I can stuff into my relatively tiny pockets. Here we are. We should pack up the crystals and leave. Now. The kobolds could stumble upon our handiwork at any moment. I'm going. Just thinking about it for a second. Though you cast about for a time, you see no sign of the crystals. Confound it. What about you, Dermon? Any luck? Nothing, nothing, nothing! But this cannot be! Gabu saw them! Spied! Spotted! Saw! Think, brother. Think. They must have moved them, yes? The question is where to and why? Within Ogomoro, where they were summoned Titan once before and mean to do so again. It's the only explanation. What about mother and father and the others? We have to stop them! And we will, Gabu. We will. Stay calm. We still have time. They have yet to call for the remaining crates, yes? If they had, then they would have found the other caches empty and sounded the alarm. Nevertheless, I believe the time for stealth has passed. We must breach the navel and seize the remaining crystals. There is no other way to prevent Titan summoning. But first, give me your crystals, that I might deliver them unto Commander Bluidin's custody. We dare not take them into the bowels of the mountain. That's smart. Glad you thought of it. The crystals, Dermon, if you would be so kind. Here you are. A large quantity of crystals intended for Titan summoning. Thank you. I shall deliver them to Camp Overlook for safekeeping and brief Commander Bluidin on the situation. Pray, go on ahead. As I recall, there is an etherite within the Ogamaro Mines that should deliver you to the navel. Gabu doubtless knows the way. Wait for me there. I shall rejoin you anon. Strange. I would have thought you eager to remain in the thick of the action. But if this is what you would prefer, then Godspeed, brother. This way! This way! I'm coming, I'm coming. Do, 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 do. Into the mines. Which I'm not sure if we've come in here for any reason yet in the uh, main story scenario stuff. Have we? I don't think so. Yeah, this is just kind of like the HQ of the uh, kobolds. It's kind of the long and short of it, really. Fortunately, just a little too high level to merit their attention, which I appreciate. Is this the right way? Yes. Here we are. Maybe we did come in here. Maybe this is how... Yeah, this is how we got to Titan way back in the day, I think. I think? I think. Whatever. It's been a while. Ah, I take it this is the etherite we seek. Right then. As soon as Alphanos arrives, we go. I trust you're feeling suitably heroic, Dermon. There's no telling what sort of resistance we'll face in there. Quickly, quickly, you clods! Briskly, swiftly, quickly! I will not suffer any further delays! Hello. Lay down your arms and surrender. We have your crystals. There will be no summoning this day. Overdwellers? Here? But how did you... Where are my parents, Patriarch? Where are they?
Mother? Father? Coke for the furnace? You monster! How could you? I... We are but servants of the Lord of Crags. We are his, that he may drink of our blood and partake of our flesh, that he might draw upon the strength of his children and defend them from the tyranny of the Overdwellers. No, Alice, not yet. I understand, Patriarch. I do. Your fear, your anger, your hate. You would do anything to protect your people. Anything to deliver them from despair. Whatever it takes to ensure that those who threaten you can never do so again. But in your single-minded pursuit of this objective, you've brought suffering on your own kith and kin. You've sacrificed the lives of the very people you sought to protect. But it need not be this way, Patriarch. Renounce this bloody course, cease your attempts to summon your god, and work with us, together, to build a lasting peace. Another peace to be abandoned at the Overdweller's convenience. Oathbreakers, all of you. Liars, betrayers, oathbreakers. You take, and you take, and you take, and when you've had your fill, you sue for peace. You promise that this time, this time is the last, until you grow hungry again. And when we dare to defend ourselves, you declare that this beast tribe cannot be suffered to live. That our god drains the land of Aether and brings naught but suffering. Death, destruction, suffering upon us all. I will hear no more lies from you and yours, Overdweller. You've ruined your own lands. You'll not ruin ours. I said I'd come for you, and I did. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Say something. Please. Please. Please! Wake up, 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 wake up. Wake up! Hells. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Alpha, no. Leave him to me. We must away. That's a good carbuncle. He's breathing, and I don't see any injuries, but I can't seem to wake him. Hmm. By the Twelve, how could I be so foolish? I should have known better than to let Gabu accompany us, given what we were likely to find. His anguish and despair have served to birth a primal, just as surely as would the supplications of the faithful. Worse, being born of such tumultuous emotion, 
This incarnation of Titan seems incapable of naught but violence. If we have one cause for optimism, it's that while many crystals were present, they represented but a fraction of the quantity intended for the summoning ritual. Meaning, that Titan must be far weaker than planned. Be that as it may, he is yet a primal. And the longer we leave him to bleed the land of Aether, the stronger he will grow. And should Titan be permitted to leave Ogomoro, more lives will be lost. The Maelstrom will rally their troops and the cycle will continue. Dermon, you know what must be done. Will you face the Lord of Crags once more? Thank you, my friend. Alice and I will tend to Gabu. When you finish with the Primal, look for us in Camp Overlook. We'll be expecting you. Sounds good. Oh, interesting. I think it's like one of the very few times where they actually have you refight a Titan just in the hard mode version for the story later. That's interesting. I guess let me get a crew together? And here we are, got the crew together. Our tanks today will be uh, Ajisai and Tartari. Our healers will be Synchronous and where's the other one somewhere in here? I just saw them, I swear. Oh, it's Kokorillion, just directly beneath Synchronous. Anyway, the fellow damage dealers will be Kokoro and Reja and Grace Wine. Lots of new faces today, that's delightful. All right, let's get ourselves in there. Again, I completely forgot this was a thing that happened. <laughs> From deep within their minds, the kobolds have watched and waited for another opportunity to summon their great father and wreak havoc on Limsa Liminsa. With the destruction of the Ultima weapon, the final obstacle to their plans was removed, allowing the beastmen to summon their god without fear of Imperial reprisal. Once more, it falls to you to ensure that the Lord of Crags never sees the light of day. Sounds good. Let's go. And here we are. Thanks for joining all of you. Well, this is fun. Y'all actually get to see what a like hard mode version of a fight we've already done before looks like. Last time we came in with only four people and fought the normal version of Titan. Now we do the hard mode version, which hits a lot harder, has way more health, is definitely actually a challenge for eight people, and uh, has new moves and mechanics and stuff you gotta watch out for. So this will be fun. Let's see how much I remember. Get him. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Oops, still gotta watch out for that. That'll knock you right off that dang platform. Although it won't, like, keep you perma-dead in the fight anymore. I said I'd come. I said I'd come. I'm here. I'm here. Yes, they have patched all of these fights since last we went through all this to where any of the fights where you could get knocked off the platform and die, you don't stay dead anymore. Now you can be raised and get back in the fight, which is good. It makes this way more manageable and less scary. I do love that the dialogue is different now, though. Given the story context, it's very good. Oop. Bombs. These bombs are going to explode in the order they arrived, so we want to let that first one go off. And then move into position to get clear of all the rest. Look out, everyone. I said I'd come. I said I'd come. I'm here. I'm here. Mother. Father. I can't. I can't find you. Now we attack Titan's heart. Yep. Nope, 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 nope. Oop. Someone's in granite jail, but not anymore. Good job. <laughs> Heart's defeated, and now we enter the final phase. Wake up! Why? 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 Yep. 
Oop, that'll hurt. A little bit. Whoop. More rocks. Yep. Middle ones are exploding first. This set's exploding last. Whoop. Move, 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 move. Ow. Too late. <laughs> Took more hits there than I should've. It's all right, still, uh, oh boy. That would hurt bad. Wear him down. Oop, someone's in granite jail. Let's fix it. There we go. Almost got this. Get him. There we go. Hey, and we did it. Thank you everyone for joining on short notice and helping me out. That's a very fun <laughs> Lalafell look. I dig it. <laughs> you all look great. Thank you so very much for helping. I very much appreciate it. You are the best. Here, I even brought fireworks for the occasion that I forget to use half the time. But fireworks. Yay. <laughs> Alright. Let's get back outside and check in. Well. Business is handled. Let's see how everyone's doing. You're back. Gods, what a relief. Ah, there he is. Did I not tell you he would return safe and sound? The deed is done, then? Titan is no more? Good. There has been enough tragedy this day. He has been like this since he regained consciousness. We believe he can hear us, but he has made no attempt to respond. He is almost certainly still in shock, but... But we cannot discount the possibility that he succumbed to the Primal's influence. Should that prove to be the case? He must be put to death, like any other Thrall. Such is the Alliance's policy, yes? You have the right of it. But we must not rush to conclusions. After all, we once feared that Isel's followers were beyond reason, and many have since laid down their arms and accepted Ishgard's peace. We can but watch, wait, and pray. Hmm. Alphano would rather not worry about what may or may not come to pass. There is not to be gained from dwelling on an eventuality of. Uh, there is not to be gained. There is not to be gained from dwelling on an eventuality over which we have no control, much less one which may never even come to pass. Let us tend to more immediate matters, informing Commander Bluidin of Titan's demise, for example. You may be certain that he will be glad of the news. Would you be so kind as to break it to him? Oh, I'd be happy to. You three sit tight. I'll be right back. Commander, I have exquisite news for you. You're going to be thrilled. Ah, you're a sight for sore eyes. When the others came back without you, I feared the worst, but they said you had matters well in hand. All settled then, is it? I'm glad to hear it. But not half as glad as my men will be, believe you me. Regardless of whether or not he was summoned properly, a primal's a primal. And there ain't a soul in the Maelstrom that hasn't lost a friend to one. Don't get me wrong, like, we were all prepared to do our part, but we weren't so naive as to think we'd live to tell the tale. Thankfully, of course, it didn't come to that. Which, my friend, sounds to me like cause for celebration. Now, I know you lot have places to be, but why not stay the night? We'd be honored to raise a glass to the triumphant return of Titan's Bane.
Who goes there? Oh, it's you. Forgive me for straying from the camp. He hasn't been feeling too welcome, to say the least. I thought a change of scenery might do him good. But, alas. It's so quiet out here. The stars spread out before us, beckoning across time and space. Dawn may banish even the darkest night. How bitterly beautiful, those words. I should be stronger for all my experiences, yet my heart aches more than ever. I never understood why Grandfather gave his life that day. I thought that if I came here, I would find the answers I needed. But when I finally laid eyes on the land he sacrificed everything to save, saw firsthand the bickering, the pettiness, I was disappointed. I was angry. I could not fathom how these people were more deserving of his love than his family, than me. But when Grandfather revealed the whole truth of the Calamity to us, I finally understood. And I resolved there and then to continue his legacy in my own way. My travels have been enlightening, but I cannot say that I have enjoyed them. I have lost count of the many petty crises that I was helpless to resolve and of the people whose actions I could not understand. There were others, of course. Good people. People with whom I felt a kinship, whose lives I could not save. I found myself asking what it was all for. Why try if I was doomed to fail in the end? But then I recalled Grandfather's words to my father, years ago, before he left Charlayan behind forever. To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolence. We must all protect that which we hold most dear in the manner of our own choosing. We have to try, do we not? Of course, it's one thing to try and another to do. There were times while I was tracking the warriors of darkness when I faltered, when I was afraid. But then I thought of my brother, of Urianger, of you. Oh, pray forgive me. This conversation has been rather one-sided, hasn't it? Mayhap you could recount some of your adventures in Ishgard. Hmm, I traveled far and wide with two companions, Estinian and Isel, who were very, etc. Under some rather unique circumstances, I had the pleasure to fight alongside Sir Emmerich, dot dot dot, or when Alphano and I came at last to the Dravanian hinterlands. Hmm. All very good stories. I'm torn between the first and the last. Let's go with the first. Gods! They must have been at each other's throats from dawn till dusk. I dare say you managed to keep the peace, though. Merely being in the presence of the Warrior of Light is surely enough to shame anyone into behaving. The hopes and dreams of so many rest on your shoulders, Warrior of Light. As long as the sun rises, we can but carry on. For the sake of those we hold dear.
To what end dost thou cling to the tainted gifts of the mother? Every tool has its purpose. Even this. Well, what is it? The seeds sown in Vilbrand have been plucked from the earth and left to wither. Alas, Titan's demise sufficed not to drive the kobolds to deepest desperation. What did the man in white have to say? That we are to proceed as he did first set forth. Well, that's easy for him to say! It's not his bloody world on the brink of destruction, is it? Be thou well reminded that with an end to Ishgard's unrest, naught now remaineth to preoccupy the Scion's thoughts. And thus may they devote their every energy to thwarting thee and thine. I foresee only greater difficulties ahead. Foresee? Are you sure you don't welcome them? I'm starting to think you might hold a candle for your old friends after all. Pray do not mistake mine intent. I but look upon the path which lieth before us with due trepidation. Shouldst thou be of like mind, pray consider then another course. For the power to invoke the ardor belongeth not unto the Assians alone. With thine own hand, strike down thine enemy, the so-called hero who would see thy home lost to light. Do but this, and thou wouldst at a single stroke disrupt the all-too-delicate balance of this realm, plunging her straightways into chaos. You do realize what you're suggesting, yes? To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolence. The words of my teacher and a creed I hold close to my heart. Very well. Draw him out. We'll make it quick. It shall be done. What good a creed one cannot uphold. What hurts soothed. What lives saved. Oh, hapless fool, what hast thou wrought by thine own hands? Minfilia, my friends, I shall not now beg your forgiveness. Full deeply, though it paineth me to walk it, I shall not stray from my chosen path. As Moonbreeder remains steadfast, so too shall I. Well, how are we doing? Where are the other two? What ho, Dermon? I trust you had a good night's rest. I was but this moment speaking with Thancred and Yestola via Link Pearl. They had some interesting news to share. Apparently, during the course of their respective investigations, both came across crates which had once borne Ishgardian seals. It would seem that someone in the capital has been very busy indeed. Accordingly, the Temple Knights have launched a full-scale investigation. Sir Emmerich believes that it's only a matter of time before the culprits are found, but we shall have to wait and see. In the meantime, it seems only prudent to look into the recent activities of the other tribes, in case they too are flush with Ishgardian crystals. And with that in mind, I suggest we pay Orionje another- Wait, where is Alice? She was here a moment ago, with Gabu. Alice? Gabu? 
LSA. Come on. Oh, there you are. What's going on? Ah, let me guess. It's time to leave, isn't it? My apologies for disappearing again. If it's any consolation, I have already packed my things. How is he? Brother, Commander Bluidin, something tells me you are not solely here out of concern for his welfare. But to answer your question, there's been no change. He will not speak or eat. I'm not sure if he slept. If he did, he seems none the better for it. He just shuffles about with that same expression on his face. You will look after him, won't you, Commander? And treat him with every kindness? He's still in there, I know it. Beneath the anguish and the despair, he's still fighting with all his heart. He deserves to be given that chance. Until he comes back to us, until we know for certain what has become of him. Aye, aye, you needn't worry. If he hadn't risked his neck to warn us and help you secure the better part of the crystals, this could have turned out a damn sight worse than it did. We'll not soon forget that, and nor will Maelstrom Command. I'm so sorry, Gabu. I truly am. You should never have been made to. And I know I cannot possibly understand. Mayhap there is nothing I can do or say. The pain of the anger, the helplessness. Hold fast to the memories of better times. Remember them as they were. And when it hurts so much your heart feels fit to burst, let it burst. Let it burst and fill up again with your love for them. And never, ever forget. Come along, little one. I... I will remember them. And you, LSA. Thank you. Have faith, sister. Your words have reached him. In time, he will recover. And those who orchestrated these events will be made to answer for their crimes. A thousand times over, I, there will be a reckoning. Um, where is every- oh, the Waking Sands. Everyone's just- pray returned without me, come on. We were hanging out, guys. We can travel together. We have heard the glad tidings from Ogomoro, my friends. By the grace of the Twelve and your most valiant efforts, the people of Limsa Liminsa may rest easy. I should like to think so, yes. Though we failed to prevent the Lord of Crags from manifesting, we did succeed in weakening him, enabling our friends to dispatch him before the Warriors of Darkness could make matters worse. It was by no means an unmitigated success, but it will have to suffice. Then let us speak of another matter, one which weigheth heavy on my lady's mind. As thou didst request, I sought out the Garun Oracles, that we might better understand the aims of the Warriors of Darkness. Though their copious use of allegory defieth any single interpretation, the oracles paint a most disturbing picture, one of worlds parallel to our own, apart, yet linked, reduced to ruin with every umbral calamity. Seven times have they succeeded. Then of ten and three, only six worlds remain. Aye, all is as my lady Menphilia spake unto thee. 
As for what becometh of these reflections when they and the source are rejoined, frail flesh undone in umbral fires, each soul surrendereth to her call, to flow unto the endless sea, there to endure as one and none. Then, then if the warriors of darkness succeed, everyone in their world will die. In essence, I, the verse speaketh of the renunciation of the flesh and subsequent return to the life stream. However, this fate may yet be preferable to the alternative, for if the first were to fall to transcendent light in the manner of the warriors of darkness described, it would give way unto a void wherein none may know either life nor death. Far better to die, they reason, for in death there is life. The essence of a soul which returneth unto the source may be born anew, saved. Such, at least, is their belief, I surmise. If that is true, then, gods, no one should ever have to make such a choice. Ere we speak further on this subject, I would share with thee another recent discovery. It would seem that several sizable shipments of crystals have been delivered into the hands of certain Alamegan parties. Alamegans? Strange. And do you believe this to be the work of the same Ishgardian smugglers who supplied the beast tribes? I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. And lest thou wonder at their motive, I would remind you that the Asians did once attempt to bring about the summoning of Ralgar. The individuals who took receipt of these shipments are refugees belonging to a group devoted to the cause of Alamegan liberation. It may also interest thee to know that their Ishgardian suppliers appear to be none other than the remnants of Elin Ryu's, uh, Ryu's... I didn't think I'd have to say that name again. I didn't even practice. Oh dear. Elin Ryu's network of spies. Surely you jest. And yet, it is not so surprising. Bereft of leadership and hunted by the Alliance, I can well imagine such villains being desperate enough to conspire with the Asians assuming they even know or care who their new employers are. All of which is irrelevant. Forgive me. We must seek out the resistance group which received the crystals without delay. Dermin, Alice, will you come with me to Little Alamigo? Oh, I'd love to. Yes, of course. I should like to hear what they have to say for themselves. First hand. May you ever walk in the light of the crystal. Hmm. Alphano, Alice, Dermin, are you three listening? Good. I have tidings. The Temple Knights raided the smugglers' warehouse less than an hour ago. A cursory interrogation of the prisoners yielded confirmation that they were in the employ of, and I hope you're sitting down, a man in black robes. Then you have them. And the crystals, too. What few remained? Aye. Regrettably, it would seem they dispatched one final shipment in the hours before we struck. It was bound for Little Alamigo, we were told, where it will be received by members of a local resistance group. Since Sir Emmerich's men no longer have need of my services, I have a mind to head that way. As do we, by happy coincidence. We learned of the shipments but a few moments ago. Ha! Huh. And there I was thinking I might finally be one step ahead of the Warrior of Light and his little helpers. Uh, wait a moment. There's more, and I defy you not to be surprised by this revelation. The leader of the Ishgardian smugglers was formerly in the employ of one Elin Ryu, the infamous Ivy herself. Once again, Thancred, I fear I must inform you that... Thancred, with whom else have you shared this information? About the smugglers? No one. As I think I mentioned, the raid was less than an hour ago. I was planning to contact Yastola next, but is there someone else you would have me notify first? No, there isn't. Yep, I think she has figured it out. What in the world's gotten into her? It's twice now that we've sought Uriange's aid, and twice she's treated him as if he were a stranger. The Archon was one of Grandfather's most dedicated pupils, and spent as much time at the Levayur estate as we did. He's practically a member of the family. Truth be told, I struggle to recall a day from my childhood when I did not see the three of them laughing together. 
If this continues, I may have to raise the matter. Later, though. Little Alamigo awaits. Indeed it do. And I'm for one, I'm excited to get there. Here we are. Hello, you two. Still no sign of Thancred. I will get to the bottom of this. Oh, forgive me, I was... It's been a long day. Did you have something to say? Orianje. Oh, I... I've always struggled to understand what's going on in his head. Now more than ever. Listen, Dermon, if anything should happen, it should be me who... Just know that I'm prepared to do what must be done. Right then, to more pressing matters. Since we have no idea when Thancred might arrive, I suggest we see what information we can gather in his absence. That's not a bad idea, but... Boy, we've been going a bit long. Let's do that next time. Thank you all so very much for watching, and I will see you again Friday, I think, if I'm calculating days right, <laughs> for some more Final Fantasy XIV. Take care until then, and goodbye!